Hello children. This month our episode of Brain Food is all about Mother's Day. Let's get started by learning some new terminology to describe the special lady who spends her life taking care of you. Our first term of the day is maternal. Maternal is an adjective that describes feelings, actions, or characteristics related to a mother, whether that mother is biological or chooses to take on that role. You might have heard of the phrase maternal instinct. Maternal instinct is used to describe the natural way a mother behaves or reacts around her children. It's something that can't be taught. Your mother's natural instinct is to take care of you and provide for you no matter what. Hey guys, it's me, Scott. I'm super excited to be meeting with Joy Williams and Leslie Norman here at the Polk Museum of Art. I can't wait to talk to them about the Citizens Mayfair by the Lake. Hi Joy, hi Leslie. I keep hearing about Citizens Mayfair by the Lake. What is it? Uh, Mayfair is a fine art festival and it is located on Lake Morton in Lakeland, Florida. Um, it's our popular duck lake if you haven't been there before. Uh, we have been in existence for about 48 years and it's a fun festival that um, allows you to look at a lot of cool art. What kinds of things do kids do at Mayfair? We have a children's hands-on activity tent where they have a theme each year. This year our theme is Colors of Spring, so there will be all sorts of activities that the kids can do. We do have a special watercolor scented painting this year where the watercolors are going to be scented with Kool-Aid so it's going to offer sensory as well as hands-on and then we also have an ESE exhibition tent for the children's art as well. Um, we've got a really fun dance party street party on Saturday night down at the Lake uh, Mirror Promenade and um, there's also a 5k race put on by the Lakeland Runners Club and Mid Florida is sponsoring that this year. Um, we have a band there for you to enjoy and so bring your parents and bring a blanket and there's lots of food trucks, um, lots of music and uh, you can watch the runners run or run yourself. And um, at nine o'clock we have fireworks so those are always popular with the kids. Uh, yeah. oh, and then we're going to be mother, Mother's Day cards as well on Sunday. Speaking of Mother's Day, if I want to get a gift from my mom, what kind of gift can I get at Mayfair? Uh, we've got a lot of cool things for your mom, and she'll love absolutely anything that you find here. We've got a lot of clay artists that make um, bowls and cups and um, plates and um, a lot of cool vases that you can put some flowers in and give to her. Uh, we've also got some, um, one artist comes and she makes um, orchids, the, the pretty um, plant, and you can purchase one of those for her. Uh, if she likes animals, we've got some sculpture um, artists that can do cool monkeys and turtles and all kinds of fun things. Um, and paintings to put on your wall. I mean, what mother wouldn't love that? So we've got a lot of really cool things that you can come out um, and find for your parents. That's so cool. I love to see all different kinds of art. Why is art so important? Uh, we love to see kids come out to Mayfair and think it's so fun to watch them explore all the different kinds of arts and find the things that um, really draws them in and finds a connection with the different artists. Um, some kids like really colorful things, um, some like glass, so it's fun to see what um, creativity the different artists have, so it, it opens your mind to different creative things. Um, and gives you ideas on what you can take home and, and create yourself. So get some Play-Doh and create your own monkey at home. So it's a lot of fun. Um, the community likes to support it because um, it's good for kids to learn about art and um, explore their horizons and think outside of the box. Um, and it brings the community together, especially Mother's Day weekend when the whole family can come out and um, be together and, and find a lot of cool things. So when Mayfair is over, where else can I go to see cool art? You're always welcome to come to the Polk Museum of Art. We always have new exhibitions going on and there is a student gallery in there that changes throughout the year for different students, different schools, different type of art that we always have. And we all, we're open 
almost seven every seven days a week. Seven, yeah, yeah, every day, and, and it's free to come. Yeah, yeah it's, it's free, free to, to come, come and bring the family and visit us. Go to the gift shop. Buy something for your mom there too. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun to come to the museum. There's um, all kinds of things to do with your family and and see all the different exhibits that we're showing. Um, and it changes about every three or four months, so you can come back as often as you'd like. The Polk Museum of Art sounds like a fun place. What other kinds of things do you have for kids? We do, we have summer camps. Um, those are a lot of fun and they're really popular with moms and kids. And um, we also have um, spring break camps during the year. And um, we also have camps for mom and dad. So if you wanna get them out of the house, um, you can send them to some of our camps. But um, yes, yeah, certainly our camps are a lot of fun. So ask your mom and dad to sign you up. Thanks so much for telling me about Citizens Mayfair by the Lake and all the cool things to do at the Polk Museum of Art. I'm going to tell my parents all about Mayfair. I'll see you there. Bye! Alyssa and we're here today at Exploration 5 Children's Museum in downtown Lakeland for this segment of Senses Overdrive. This is Tia. She's going to be helping us with our experiment. So Tia, what are we going to be doing today? Well hi, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about wind science. Um, and at the museum, one of the cool art projects we're going to be um, participating in is making your own windmill. So today we're going to make a simple windmill, so all you're going to need okay. is a piece of paper that is an exact square. Okay. You've got yours? Yeah. Um, you're going to need a pencil that's unsharpened. Okay. Um, some scissors and then any type of pin that you want. I use these cool brass um, mm -hmm. looking pins, but it doesn't matter whichever one you want. Um, I will say this is a project to do with supervision, so you're, it's good to kind of help out with this one. So what we're going to do okay. is we're going to take our paper and we're going to fold it in half so that two ends meet. Okay, unfold it, Okay. and then you're going to fold it the other way. Okay. Okay, there we go. Alright, so when you're done, you should have these big X in the middle of your paper. Okay. Alright, and what you're going to do is we're going to take some scissors, and we're going to follow the lines that we did, and we're going to stop right about a half an inch from the middle, so okay. that you don't cut all the way through. Okay. And so we'll just go ahead. The next step in our project is to take one corner okay. and just sort of fold it so that so it crosses the middle right there. Like that? Like that, yep. And now whatever corner you start with, you have to do for each of the other pieces. And you want to make sure all the pieces sort of overlap in the center. And when you're done, you should have this cool windmill shape. Yeah. All right. So next step is we're going to take your pencil. Okay. And you're going to take your pin. Okay. And we're going to poke the pin through all of the center. So to okay. do it, it's really easy if you kind of fold it onto the, to the table. You just sort of push it through like that. Okay. There we go. Go about that one. Ready? Right, there we go. Perfect. There. No. There we go. Did you get it? I think. Be a little tricky. There we go. Got it. Then the next step is we're going to take it and we're going to stick it right through the eraser. But you want to be careful. You don't want to go too far. We don't want to poke our finger on the other side. Is that good? Or does it need to go all the way through? Nope. It does not need to go all the way through. And then lastly, we just sort of want to unbend any creases that we might have accidentally kind of put in there when we were. And so once it's um, kind of puffed up a little bit, then we have these really cool shapes that can catch our, our wind, right? And we can give it a little bump. And we see the wind. There it goes. There we go. Wow, thanks Tia, that was fun. If you want to get your senses into overdrive, come here to Exploration 5 Children's Museum in downtown Lakeland. Bye everyone, I'll see you again soon. Bye. Are you 
ready for our next term of the day? The word illuminate is a verb, and it has two meanings that apply to our mothers. The first meaning of illuminate is to supply with light. For example, my mother illuminates my life with her radiant smile. The second meaning of illuminate is to make clear or to explain. Our mothers are our first teachers in life. We look up to them and learn about the world through their experiences. Mothers illuminate our lives from the moment we are born. Hello, and welcome to Storytime. Now, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Stories come in all different shapes and sizes. For example, there are short stories, which we tend to do at, on story time quite a bit. Then there are novellas, which are sort of medium-sized stories. And then there are novels, which are much longer. But all of those that we just discussed are stories that are written, stories that you physically read. Well, you can also hear a story. In other words, your friend or your teacher or your pastor can, can tell you a story and, and that is still a story. So today I thought I'd share with you a story that a friend of mine who was a teacher told me. Shall we begin? All right then. Katie usually enjoyed school and today was no exception because today she was anticipating getting a really good grade in class. The assignment was, what does your mom like most about her job? Well, last year, Katie's class had learned that her mom was a firefighter, and the kids were really impressed. During the presentation her mom had given, she'd described many of the jobs she did as a firefighter. This year, Katie had simply written down what her mom had said last year and submitted that as her project. Katie and several of her other classmates were in for a little bit of a shock, however. The assignment was to interview your mother. Katie's teacher had emailed each mother a survey and asked them to fill it out and return it to her so that she could judge her students' interviewing skills. It didn't take long for some of the students to figure out that they were in trouble. When the teacher announced to the class that she had compared their essays to surveys that their mums had sent back, several of the students fidgeted in their chairs and looked uncomfortable. They'd obviously done just as Katie had done and written the essay without having spoken to their mums. Katie was a little embarrassed, but not too concerned. Her mother was always really busy and probably didn't have time to answer the email. The teacher discussed each student's assignment and questioned those whose essays didn't match the surveys that their mother had sent in. Katie wasn't too worried until she realized that her essay had been skipped. Why hadn't the teacher discussed hers? Was it because her mom hadn't answered? Was her mom the only one who hadn't answered the survey? Her mother also worked part-time as a substitute teacher when she wasn't on shift as a firefighter. Had she chosen that to write about? Did Katie's essay not match her mother's and maybe the teachers hadn't put the two of them together for that reason? Well, when the bell rang, Katie was a little confused. When her teacher, Mrs. Pringle, asked her to stay after class, Katie started to worry. Yes, Mrs. Pringle, said Katie in a small voice that wavered a little more than she would have liked. Mrs. Pringle took a sheet of paper out from under the stack where she had just been reading from. I didn't want to embarrass you in front of the class, Katie, so I thought you'd better see this when everyone else was gone. Katie took the little sheet of paper from Mrs. Pringle. She recognized her mother's small, neat handwriting immediately. She had answered the survey. Katie swallowed hard and began to read. I am a firefighter, the short paragraph began, and as such, people I don't even know depend on me. I am called away from home regularly and stay overnight in the firehouse at least twice a week. There are many things I do as a firefighter that are important and exciting, but the job that I am most proud of, the job that is the most exciting and the most important 
is being Katie's mum. I have been given the job of loving and protecting a beautiful, smart, kind and loving little girl and nothing in the world is more important to me than that. Tears were streaming down her face as Katie slowly handed the paper back to Mrs. Pringle. She felt guilty, humiliated, proud, sad and happy all at the same time. Mrs. Pringle took a tissue out of her desk drawer and handed it to Katie. Then she took another one out for herself and both of them blew their noses at the same time. Your writing was very good, young lady, but you clearly did not interview your mother for this project. Katie sniffed loudly. No, ma'am, she said. Well, your grade for this project will be very low, said Mrs. Pringle, but I suggest that you go straight home after school and give your mother a great big hug. Yes, ma'am, answered Katie, I will. All right then, said Mrs. Pringle, you may go. And Katie walked swiftly out of the classroom and did just what she'd told Mrs. Pringle she would do and gave her mom a big hug when she got home. Well, that was a lovely story, wasn't it? Well, thank you for joining us for another edition of Storytime. Hey kids, are you ready to power up? Today's episode is dedicated to all those moms out there that power up every day. We're gonna start with some examples of some simple chores that you can do to help your mom and get some good exercise too. Since we're in the kitchen, we're gonna start with clearing the table and washing the dishes. Let's get started. We're gonna start with clearing the table. This is a great exercise because it means you've gotta lift and walk back and forth from the table to the sink. Then we're gonna put the dishes in the sink. Sometimes you've gotta hand wash dishes. Sometimes you just have to rinse them off and put them in the dishwasher. Either way, it's good exercise and your mom's gonna love it. Next, we're gonna to go to clean the windows. This is a real easy one. All you've gotta do is get yourself some paper towels and some window cleaner. Spritz and wipe. You do this a couple times with one hand, then move to the next window and do it with the other hand. thing we're going to do is something every mom could use a little help with. That's vacuuming. We're going to get the vacuum out and run it all over the floor. This exercise is good for your arms and legs as you push the vacuum back and forth. The next chore we're going to take on is laundry. You might have to ask your mom exactly how the washing machine works so you don't get it wrong. We're gonna take the clothes and put them in the washing machine, add our soap, and voila. Now here's where the exercise really kicks in. We've got to fold all these clothes once they're finished drying. All right, now we've got to do some of the gross stuff, but it still have to be done. We're going to start by cleaning the bathroom. This toilet brush is gross. That's why you want to make sure you wear gloves. 
All these cleaning materials contain dangerous chemicals, so you want to make sure that your parents help you the first time you do this, so you know how to use it properly. One more thing that can really help your mom is taking out the trash. It's gross, it's disgusting, but boy is it good exercise. And your mom's gonna love it. And if you really want some extra brownie points with mom, you can always feed the dog and take him for a walk. Well, there you have it. You can show your mom some love this Mother's Day and every other day by helping out around the house. I'll see you again next time on Power Up. Our third term of the day is the word ardent. Ardent is an adjective, and it means having or showing very strong feelings. Ardent is just another word for passionate. Mothers have ardent love for their children that is expressed in everything they do for us. We don't always see it, but they get up every day to provide for us, they take care of the household, they help with homework, and they do tons of constant work to give us a better, easier life. All of the sacrifices our mothers make for our happiness in life are examples of the word ardent. Hey kids, welcome to another segment of Arts and Crafts. Mother's Day is a holiday celebrated around the world that honors motherhood. Since today's episode is themed around Mother's Day, I thought it might be interesting to learn about the holiday's origins. Historically, you can find celebrations of motherhood as far back as ancient Greece and Roman times, where festivals were held in honor of the mother goddesses Rhea and Cybele. In the United States of America, the origins of Mother's Day date back to the years before the Civil War, which was held from 1861 to 1865. A woman named Anne Reeves Jarvis from West Virginia started Mother's Day work clubs in order to teach women how to properly care for their children. After the Civil War, the clubs became a way for people to come together and set aside their differences in order to achieve a common goal of raising children. In 1868, she organized Mother's Friendship Day, during which mothers gathered with former soldiers from both sides of the war to promote peace. Anne Reeves Jarvis died in 1905, and her daughter Anna Jarvis created a Mother's Day celebration in May of 1908 to honor the sacrifices mothers make for their children. Thousands of people attended the celebration, so she decided to pursue adding Mother's Day to the national holiday calendar. It wasn't easy, and Anna Jarvis wrote many letters to newspapers and important politicians insisting that mothers be given this special day as their own. Her determination finally paid off in 1914, when President Woodrow Wilson officially established the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. Alrighty, well now that you know a little bit about the history of Mother's Day, it's time for our special craft of the day. Mothers love receiving handmade gifts, so today we're going to learn how to create a do-it-yourself photo frame. Once you learn how to create this, you can make photo frames for other holidays, like Valentine's Day, Christmas, Father's Day, or even just as a special something for anyone in your life. 
Before you get started, make sure you ask your mom or dad for a memorable picture that you can put in the frame. This can be a picture of yourself, your family, your dog, or just any picture that you think she will like. For this do-it-yourself photo frame, you will need craft sticks or popsicle sticks, colored cardboard, white glue or a glue gun, poster paint, a paintbrush, scissors, a pencil, a ruler, and things to decorate your photo frame with. You can also create a magnet photo frame by getting a couple of little magnets to glue to the back of the frame. First, choose the shape of your frame. Arrange the popsicle sticks together however you'd like. You can be simple and make a square, or you can play around and make a custom design. Next, paint the sticks. Use your mom's favorite color, or if you can't decide, paint each stick a different color. After the paint dries, glue the sticks together in the shape of your design. time to decorate your frame. Get really creative here by painting patterns or little designs, gluing on sequins or buttons, using paper or fabric cutouts, or even using natural materials like seashells, branches, or flowers. Trace the outline of the frame onto your piece of colored cardboard. Then, draw a slightly smaller version inside of the outline. The goal here is to make a backing board that is slightly smaller than the frame of the picture. Cut out the piece of cardboard and glue it onto the back of the frame. Cut your photo to a size that fits inside the frame and then glue it onto the center of the cardboard. Now, if you want to make a magnet, you can glue one or two magnets to the back of the frame. have a gift that your mom will treasure forever. Happy Mother's Day, today and every day. I'll see you next time for more arts and crafts. It's time for our last term of the day. The word soothing is an adjective that means producing feelings of comfort or relief. Can you think of any moments in your life when you were worried, afraid, sad, or maybe angry? Whenever we're having those feelings, we rely on our mothers to soothe us or to calm us down. Our mother's wisdom and life experience assures us that things will turn out all right in the end. And when words can't do the trick, there's nothing more soothing than a mother's hug. Thank you for joining us for our Mother's Day edition of Brain Food. This is a gentle reminder to celebrate your mother every day, not by buying her cards or presents, but simply by telling her that you love and appreciate her. I'll see you next time for more terminology.